Hi, I'm Lauren Rose. And I am Lauren Mitchell. And, and we, we are, are the Lawrence. Lawrence. We are the student support counselors for the high schools. Today, we're going to talk about the district's suicide prevention procedure. As mental health professionals, we recognize that this topic is very sensitive in nature, and most people are incredibly uncomfortable hearing about or talking about it. But as Lauren is going to share in a minute, suicide is greatly impacting our society and therefore it must be addressed. Simply ignoring it will not make it go away. Suicide is the second leading cause of death for children ages 10 to 18. Unfortunately, many of us have also been touched by suicide. When a student discloses suicidal ideation, it can be very shocking, upsetting, scary, and confusing. We understand that it is hard and so many emotions are wrapped up in a situation like this. However, as educators, we do have a responsibility to act when and if a child does disclose they may be a harm to themselves. We all need to know what to do and what to say in these sensitive situations. First, we're going to go over some basic information about when to use this procedure. The way the procedure is written says that any staff member who encounters any student who gives any indication that they are thinking about killing themselves should follow this procedure. This might sound like, I want to die, or I just can't do it anymore, or I'm having scary thoughts. One caveat is that just because a student discloses that they are cutting themselves, it does not automatically mean that they are suicidal. Just because a student discloses that they have attempted suicide in the past, it does not mean that they are suicidal. And just because a student reports that they are depressed, it does not automatically mean they are suicidal. If a student mentions any of these things, the appropriate next question would be, are you thinking about hurting yourself or killing yourself right now? Or have you in the last few days? I know this can be incredibly hard to say, but you are absolutely the best person to ask it. And we know from research that you are not in any way putting ideas into their head. If a student at that point says that they are having suicidal thoughts, move forward with this procedure. If they deny having current suicidal thoughts, it's okay to let them go about their day but make sure you follow up with an administrator or a counselor so that that student can be monitored. Now that we know when to use this procedure, let's jump into reviewing the first step, which is the same whether you are in-person or virtual educator. And later we will be going into more specifics regarding in-person versus virtual. Whether you are interacting with students in person or virtually, the first step of the procedure is to stay calm. The student needs to see someone who is empathetic, understanding, and helpful. Overreacting will cause more stress and could make the student regret telling you what they have said. An empathetic response might sound like, thank you so much for trusting me with this information. I bet that was really hard. Or I can see that you're really struggling with life right now, but I'm here and we're going to walk through this together. Now let's talk about what to do if you're an in-person educator and a student makes a suicidal statement. After remaining calm, the next step is to attempt to stabilize the situation. If the student is in imminent danger, call 911 immediately. After doing so, then contact the building administrator. I bet a lot of people watching though are curious, what is imminent danger and how can I determine that? Well, imminent danger is when a student is showing overt signs of carrying out their plan. For example, if a student tells you that they have taken a bunch of pills, or if a student tells you or indicates that they might have a weapon on them, or maybe a student is in a high place where they could possibly jump or fall, this would be a couple situations in which you would call 911. But you also need to use your own judgment. You know your students. And if your student does tell you that they are thinking of ending their life, please always err on the side of caution. And if you are in any doubt, call 911 immediately and then your building administrator. If you are an in-person educator and the student does not appear to be in imminent danger, you still need to escort the student to an office immediately. This office could be the counseling office, the dean's office, the principal's office, the nurse's office, etc. If it is not possible to escort the student to an office, you should notify someone immediately. Do not send texts or emails. This will only delay the process. 
Each building will have a slightly different procedure here. The important thing to know is who you should contact and how you can contact them. Some options might be to save administrator or counselor phone numbers in your cell phone. Another option may be to create a crisis phone list and post it near your phone. Some schools may prefer that you contact an administrator or a counselor directly, and other schools may prefer that you contact an administrative assistant who is usually sitting at their desk and able to answer the phone most often. The important thing is to communicate with your counseling and administrative teams and know what is expected at your building. Okay, so at this point in the process, you are either walking with a student to someone's office or are waiting with the student for someone to come pick them up. Do not leave the student alone under any circumstances. Do not leave them unsupervised, not even to go to the bathroom or to get a glass of water. They need to be always present with an adult. During this time, it is also important to keep the student engaged as much as possible. You should talk to them and maybe try to determine if there is a plan or any instrumentalities like weapons, substances, or anything else that might cause them harm. If the student does have these items on their person, try to remove them from the student if that student allows it. But please do not push this. If the student is firmly stating no, don't try to convince them otherwise. It's important not to further aggravate the situation and to remain calm so the student does so as well. You can talk to them about anything. Class, the weather, the holidays, anything that might come up. When you have finally reached the office or another adult has come to pick up the student, use a warm handoff to help ease the transition. A warm handoff means that you are handing the re responsibility for the student to another physical, warm-bodied human being. You are not sending an email into the Googleverse and hoping that someone else might get it and follow up. Here's an example of a warm handoff. Sally, this is Mrs. Jones. Mrs. Jones, this is Sally. Sally has shared that she is thinking about killing herself. She's really upset today because her boyfriend has broken up with her. Sally, is there anything else that Mrs. Jones needs to know? After you have done this, you have done everything that you need to do in this situation and you are okay to go about the rest of your day. Now let's move on to how to handle these situations in a virtual world. Because virtual teachers are not physically present with their students, these procedures are slightly different. Just like the in-person procedures, the first step is to stay calm. Next, attempt to stabilize the situation. If the student is in imminent danger, remember to call 911 immediately and then your building administrator. I'd also like to take a second to explain how imminent danger might look and sound a little bit different in a virtual setting. Remember, imminent danger is when a student is showing overt signs of carrying out their plan. All the examples from the in-person procedure are applicable here. However, there is a little bit of gray area with virtual as well. For example, you might be speaking to a student online and the student might disclose that they want to kill themselves and they are thinking of using a gun. And you know for a fact there are guns in the home. This would be an immediate danger because they have direct access to that instrument. Another situation that might come up is the student might disclose this and, and would hang up the phone. Again, that is immediate danger because you do not know where the student went or what they're about to do. In both of those situations, you should call 911 immediately. Also, it is about your own judgment. If you, you know your students, so if the student does tell you that they are thinking of ending their life, again, always err on the side of caution. If in any doubt, call 911, do not hesitate. Another thing that might be different if you're dealing with a situation virtually is that you need to attempt to confirm the student's physical location. A lot of our students may not be doing their schoolwork in their homes, or they may have moved and we may not have a current address intact. If we're going to be sending emergency services or someone from the school to check on the student, we need to know exactly where to send them. Another thing that you can do if the student is virtual is to ask if they're home alone and encourage them to reach out to anyone else that they can. It may be a parent, a sibling, or even a pet, but having someone else or something else present with the student physically can help reduce the risk. You want to try to keep the student engaged and online if at all possible. 
until a counselor, administrator, parent, SRO, or emergency services are able to intervene. Once you have a visual or auditory confirmation that a safe adult is with the student, attempt to do a warm handoff. This would sound very much like an in-person warm handoff. Remember, even if you are teaching virtually, you're not alone. You may need to use other teachers for help in situations like this. It may be that you text a peer and tell them that you need help immediately, or you flag someone down in the hallway. Because we want to keep the student engaged on screen, it might be necessary for someone else to make the actual call to 911 while you are still talking with the student online. It doesn't hurt to ask for help. The last step for a virtual teacher would be to notify your building administrator and the student's counselor as soon as possible about what has happened. This ensures that there can be appropriate and timely follow-up. The last part of the procedure we're going to discuss today is what to do if a virtual student makes a suicidal statement but does not appear to be in imminent danger. This might be when the student makes a statement indicating that they're thinking of killing themselves but isn't currently acting it out or carrying out their plan or doesn't even have a plan. Like in the first two procedures, the first step is to stay calm and the second would be to notify the building administrator or the student's counselor immediately. Never ever send emails or texts and this will delay the message. Again, this could be the perfect time to utilize your peers to assist you when notifying others. If after a couple minutes you are still unable to locate anybody, then you call 911. It is important to also confirm the student's location and if that student is alone. Talk with the student to determine if he or she has any dangerous instruments in that home. Also, try and keep the student engaged online if possible until a counselor, administrator, parent, or SRO can intervene. Once you have the visual or auditory confirmation that an adult is present with the student, you have done all you need to do in this situation. There are a few other situations that you might run into that we'd like to discuss. The first is, what if I learn that a student is having suicidal ideation and I'm not physically in front of them and I'm not talking to them on a live Google Meet? The procedure says that if a staff member receives communication or becomes aware of a student contemplating suicide outside of class, notify a building administrator, school counselor, or SRO immediately. Never text or send emails as this will only delay the process. If you are unable to reach a school personnel within a short amount of time, call 911. Another question we've gotten before is what if a student makes a statement regarding suicide and I as the educator don't necessarily believe that the student is serious? Honestly, the fact of the matter is you have to take every statement seriously. We know from research that students who might joke or flippantly talk about suicide, they're the ones who are at much greater risk of actually carrying this out. It is so much better to err on the side of caution and be overzealous rather than brush it off as a joke and then have something really terrible happen. So even if you might be 100% certain it's a joke, remember there really never is 100% certainty. Some of you might be thinking, but I don't have the SRO or my administrator's phone numbers to call them. You need to get them ASAP. Store them in your phone or print them out and place them next to your phone in your classroom. That being said, administrators and counselors may not be able to answer the phone right away if they are in a meeting or with a student. This is why it might be helpful to have the phone numbers for your administrative assistants saved. Even if you can't reach an administrator or a counselor, an administrative assistant should be able to radio for anyone available, or they could physically interrupt a meeting and let the counselor or administrator know they're needed for an emergency. It is also really important to know which counselor is assigned to your student. In some cases, this might be by grade level, but in other cases, it's alphabetical by last name. A student's assigned counselor can be located in TAC. Get the counselor's office number and save it to your phone. While any counselor can respond to these types of crisis situations, it's a good chance that the student's assigned counselor might already have a close relationship with the student. This can help the process go more smoothly as there is already trust established between the two of them. Thank you so much for joining us today to talk about this really important subject.